identity. About identity. Turn away from the Matthew 16. Real quick. I'm not going to hold this real, real late. I'm so glad of how the Lord's moved in this service. And we want to. I don't think it was mentioned. We do so many prayer requests. I get lost in all the prayer requests. I want to pray for Brother Wesley Ward's family. The Ward family tonight. I don't, I'm don't. i sure Brother Carl and Sister Jan mentioned it. But if they didn't, I want to mention it again. He's a great brother and a great friend. And his uncle pastors a church here in Johnson City. And, and they're powerful people of God. And his mother was a great woman of God. I've been in their services in their tent. Seen the Holy Ghost use her, minister to her, preach to her, use her mightily. And I know that Brother Johnny is grieving tonight. Brother Wes, Sister Melissa, and all that family, we want to really pray for them tonight. Because one day, if time lasts, in the course of time, I'll pass, I'll pass that bridge, I'll cross that bridge. And they say, it's nothing like losing your mom, Brother David. And I believe it. When nobody else is there, your mama's there. When nobody else is there, your mama and Jesus are there. Amen. I love my mama. I had a woman tell me one time, she said, you love your mama. You call your mama. Man, I love my mama. I, I told that one. I'll tell, I'll tell you one thing. I said, hey, my mama's treated, you treated me a certain way. I said, but I love my mama. Ain't nothing wrong with loving your mama. Ain't nothing wrong with you because you love your mama. It ain't no spirit of, somebody said one time, so that's the end. Said, it ain't the end said to love your mama. I'm not talking about it in the world, but you're supposed to love your mama. We're in a day right now, people don't love their mama. They cuss their mama. They tell their mama this and that. Just want money from them. Just take advantage of people. But I love the woman that came me and brought me into this world. They suffered. And I laid up over here in a hospital in downtown Johnson City in 1977 and pushed me into this evil world. I praise God for her. Her birthday was this Wednesday past, yesterday. And I thank God she is still alive. Weighs 109 pounds. In bad shape, but she's still kicking. And I love my mama. People come, people go. Friends come, friends go. Some people's had wives come and go. But your mama won't go. Your mama will stay. Unless she's full of the devil, then she, you can pray it out of her. And then she won't, she won't go. Because <laughs> your mama is your best friend other than Jesus Christ. I just feel like saying that. I said you mad a little bit. Just a little. Get mad at the devil. Get mad at the devil. Because when I see what he does to people and how he messes us up and deceives us and makes us think there's something better out here, there's nothing better than what we felt tonight. There's nothing better than this. To eat the Word of God, to feast around the table of the Holy Ghost and partake and be made partakers of His Spirit is the greatest thing on earth. Amen. To be able to identify with the creator of the universe. The creator of the universe. To be able to identify with the Almighty. That He allowed us into His realm. Yes. We talk growing up and we still do about accepting Christ and accepting the Lord as our personal Savior and all this. But really, in reality, it's the reverse, Brother Carl. He accepted us, He invited us into His world. We think we invited him into ours, but in reality, he invited us, Brother Michael, into his world. Or we wouldn't have never been able to get into it. Except the spirit of my father draws you. If he hadn't drawn us to repentance, we could never have came. He has to put the want to inside of us. Amen. And when he does, we come to it. But he invited us into his reality. He invited us into his dominion. He invited us to be partakers of his glory, of his nature. Amen. He told us through Paul that we're a peculiar people. I said, why do y'all act that way? Because we're peculiar. This woman come in May the 5th. She sings a song, I'm peculiar. I was at a house in Kentucky in 98 at a birthday thing for a boy, a man. See, I go call people boys. I preach them. We was at this man's house for a birthday together. And that sister Linda Gibson come through. She's from up in the hills, up in the mountains. And that's where I started out with, was with some of her family in church years ago. 
And somebody said that woman that sings them songs and writes all them songs is stopping by here. I said, my God, I hope she sings some of them. And she come in there and starts singing, I'm peculiar. I don't do things like you do. They call me a holy roller, and I'm proud to say it's true. I get excited when you speak my Jesus' name. Because, honey, I'm not ashamed. I tell my shout. Sometimes I jump around, and it gets all over me when they talk about that Holy Ghost. Lord, he makes me speak in tongues. I'm feeling him right now. Excuse me while I run. She sang that song, and man, people went crazy. They were shouting in that trailer. Underpinning, falling off. I'm talking about... But somehow we got so far away from stuff like that. We got to have all these trappings of church and, and push through all this stuff before we can get to that point where we were at a minute ago. Yeah, that's right. I want to see it come back, Brother Carl, to when people get out of their cars in the parking lot. Coming toward the door, they're staggering like drunks, can't even walk. Under the power of God. Somebody said, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you need to see it. You need to see it. Somebody said one time, I'm talking about different things the Lord would do, and it's talking to a man, and they said, What do you think about that? And that man said, He had just come from church where all that stuff was going on. He, he said, Well, it's something to see. He said, The Lord told him, Don't say much. And he said, Boy, it's something to see. That ain't nothing like the Holy Ghost. That ain't nothing like a Holy a holy Lord. I'm talking about the real power of God getting down on you where you lose mind of this world and you forget who you are for a while. Amen. And that's getting away from us in this hour. It's getting away from us in this hour. And somebody said, what? If you pastor this church, you may leave that on, you may wish you hadn't left it on. Uh, when somebody said, if you pastor this church, what's your vision? What do you want to do? I said, there's some pictures in the back on the wall behind the thing, hid behind the thing, not hid, but you can't see them. And I said, there's an old man, a woman in there, men of God, and a woman of God, and some old pictures and some old people. And Brother David said, see some stuff. And I said, I want to see that church restored back to what it was founded on. If God sent me here, he sent me for that purpose. If he didn't send me for that purpose, he didn't send me here. anything new to give you. But the Lord spoke to me before we came up here and I had no intention. I thought Brother David of visiting here some, but I had no intention of anything much beyond that. But the Lord started dealing with me in Scripture and said, I've called you to be a repairer of the breach. I've called you to go into the old waste places. Hallelujah. There's houses of God. Yeah. Almost empty. Yeah. I counted a while ago. We got about 30, roughly a little over 30. Yeah. On Thursday night. Yeah. On Thursday night. Yeah. I'm looking forward to get greater and greater. Yeah. Amen. But no matter how many people come to this assembly, I'm not going to forget about that church over there. Or this place down here. Or that one over yonder. Where I've seen God move in times past. And now the weeds are growing up. I drove by one on the other side of town the other day and the weeds had grown up. Yeah. Amen. God is getting ready to restore yes, he is. all that the enemy, that the locust, that the palmer worm, right. that the canker worm. Yeah. God called them his great army. How is it his great order? Because he ordains all things to accomplish his will. He said even he created the devil to do what he's doing. To fulfill the plan of God. Everything's got a part to play. Amen. But he said he was going to restore the years. <laughs> years. Yep. You don't talk about restoration. We think about two or three years ago. No, the years. This didn't just start. These Things, the, the, these enemies of our of our truth and of our churches and of our, our spiritual life started eating away right at the beginning. They say there are bacteria in your body that the moment you die, they're already eating on you from the inside out. And you think crap stuff sometimes. 
I would do pest control and spray, and lately the wind blowing, a lot of that back spray has been coming back on my face. And I got to think, thinking, Brother Phil, I thought, you know, that bacteria that's eating me from the inside out, this spray may kill it. <laughs> but I may not rot like everybody. <laughs> but we're rotting before we die, folks. We're rotting before we die. But Job said, no, the skin worms devour my flesh. I'm still going to retain my identity as a son of God. If everybody on earth turns against us, Brother James, we've got to remember who we are. And if we remember who we are in Him, He'll show up in the fire. He'll show up in the fiery trials. Brother Phil, he'll show up. He showed up for you in the doctor's office. He showed up for you. Amen. I saw that brother you're talking about. I watched him and watched videos of him. And I thought, man, I don't know this guy. I don't know nothing about him. I said, but I feel they're just people you feel a connection with. Then there's good people that you don't for some reason. But you, then I felt a connection with him. And then I saw he was down there and he was speaking the word of God to my brother. And I said, Lord, I know that's God because he wasn't going through the fakeness of trying to jerk. Man, I tell you, I've worked in this thing in 10 revivals and you see all kind of charlatan. You see all kind of uh, steak oil and medicine shows and all this nonsense. But there's a real word of God. He said... I'm not talking about this wheelchair stuff. He said there's something on the inside. He started talking to that spirit man. Yeah. When we get anointed, when we get in this, when we get our identity straight, we don't look at each other anymore the same. I seen my brother come around the corner with that work shirt on. I thought, who's that? It's from a distance. I thought, who is that? Maybe that's a worker coming in here. Maybe he'll come in here. And then he come on closer and I could tell who it was. I identified him. Man, our vision gets a little cloudy and we can't identify things right. We can't identify who our brother and sister is. We think it's a stranger. Amen. But I want to be able to identify my brother and my sister. But before we can do that, Brother Tripp, we've got to identify ourselves as a son of God. Say, well, Jesus was the son of God. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. He became a son for 33 and a half years to be that perfect sacrifice for sin. He said he was the first fruit of many brethren. Amen. When he resurrected, they was the first fruits of the resurrection. Me and you are going to be the dead in Christ. If we die, and we're going to rise first. Amen. We're identified. He said as many as received him, to them gave he power. And that power is the power of the Holy Ghost to become sons of God. Sons of God. We're not sons of this flesh. We're not sons of this world. Hallelujah, Brother Adam. We're sons of God. Amen. We can identify as sons of God tonight. Amen. Daughters of God tonight. Amen. Because of this spirit and nothing else. You could not even be able to read but have that Holy Ghost living inside of you. Amen. And it identified child of God, as a son of God. That's how he lives in us tonight. And so, as we go on, I'm not going to hold you very long here, but as we go on into this scripture real quick, Matthew 16, real fast, forgive me tonight, and I appreciate this worship that got me fired up. When I look around and I see the Lord move, I like it. This old preacher in Virginia one time, he said he got where he couldn't see, his vision dimmed, and he lived by faith. He said he, you know, didn't fight people, but he didn't go to doctors and things. He just depended on the Lord for his healing. And said he would still go out to church, and he couldn't see. He got to where he couldn't hear, and then have to walk around by the hand. But he said, I still know when the Holy Ghost moves. Amen. They said he used to preach, and when he would preach, the power of God would fall. And people would get up and start dancing, and you'd hear feet on the wood floors while they was preaching some like music. Yeah. And said so when he got down in an old age and got in that condition, that he uh, would just sit back and they'd ask him, say, Brother Bates, you want to say something? You want to do something? And said so he'd just sit back and say, Feed me, brothers. Feed me. 
And he meant this word. He couldn't see, he couldn't hear, but he wanted to be fed. The word feeds me tonight. When I see you blessed, it feeds me. When I see you shout, it feeds me. When I see somebody receive something we say, it feeds me. This is our life tonight, folks. This world out here don't matter. We're soon going to find out, Brother Carl, the things that we think matter don't matter. Our close family and our friend, loved ones, and this Word of God and our body of Christ, that's all that matters tonight. Amen. The Word of God in our lives and our, our fellowship with one another. Amen. Amen. They used to prophesy, and I heard them talk about, said there'll come a day that the doors will be locked in the churches. That we won't be able to come out and assemble like we are now. Well, while we can, I want to do it. While we can, I want to do it. I'm not getting, I'll refuse to get caught up in people's discussions about when the Lord's coming back and all these different things. I don't care if he comes back before daylight. It don't matter to me. You know nothing about that. But I know one thing. We're headed toward strange and unusual times. We're in a time right now people are afraid. We have to, a lot of times, I mean, when I work for the evangelist I travel with, I used to wear a, a, a thing on me, a, you know, a, a strap, and I would carry a pistol on me because we'd go out jogging and people would try to run over him. People would come and try to uh, attack him and different things. And so we had to do that. And people have to carry weapons to the house of God. We have to be on defense at all times because you never know what's going to happen. But I'm telling you, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And hallelujah, until the Bible talked about one place, people would have to one stay up and watch while the other one slip. And we're almost in that time now. Well, we can't let fear grip us. we got to identify and say, greater is he that's in me. See, we think about all that applies. It applies to anything. Greater is he that's in you, Sister Shane, than he that's in the world. That that spirit that's in a man that would come in and do something to it. Hey man, when he comes, I, I want to get people like that in the altar and, and wrestle in this altar with them and help them pray through. Hallelujah to salvation, not run them off. Drunks used to come to tent revivals and the meetings. They said, said one time, I used to hear him talk about it. Said this man would go out and drink and party, and a tent revival come through town or Brush Harbor or whatever it was, and said he started going to that meeting. He'd come home. And I guess his wife thought he was just out drinking and cavorting around. And he'd go again and come back. Said one night he'd come in staggering, I guess, receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. But before that, said he went and I guess hadn't received it yet. Maybe was a little intoxicated. And he got up and got to carrying on. And they said, brother, if you can get us on and pray right next right. But he was getting up wanting to carry on, you know, and they threw him out. And said so he went home. The wife said, where you been? He said, I've been down there at that tent revival. She said, no, you ain't. He said, yes, I have. And he had. And she said, well, if you've been to a tent revival, what was they doing down there?